Thank you. Welcome back. And um, our next session, I think pretty highly anticipated session by Matt and Andrew on Community Galaxy Update. OK. Is that, uh, is that showing properly? Yep. OK, great. So uh, I'm Matt Davis. I'm uh, an architect on the Ansible core team. Um, I'm Nitz Mahone on uh, GitHub and IRC and other various places. Um, been around on the core team for about six, a little over six years now. And um, let's see, was an Ansible user for like a couple of years before that from like about 2014. So, um, and today, uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, just kind of what's going on with Galaxy, and and in particular, um, I know there's there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of worry about um, things with standalone roles, and so we'll we'll be talking about that a little bit and kind of what we're thinking. So just uh, for a little bit of history, this is we'll we'll just kind of I'll talk just briefly about kind of the history of, of Galaxy itself. So. In, uh, in 2013, Galaxy went into its initial beta, um, and it allowed for people to publish and install Ansible roles uh, from GitHub. So there was kind of a linkage there, and uh, it was just a really light kind of metadata indexing site. And there was a, a little CLI that went along with it that would let you publish, you know, that would let you publish things uh, to this metadata site and kind of point at a at a GitHub repo and say like, this is where the bits are. And when uh, you know, the installation side of it would, would just go and fetch the bits from there. So really the Galaxy site was, was just, it's just metadata. Um, in 2014, the official uh, Galaxy launch happened. Um, and in 2016, the Galaxy project itself got open sourced. Um, back when Ansible was, was a, its own thing, you know, there were the, the core Ansible stuff was, was always open source, but Tower and Galaxy and, and some of our other little projects uh, were closed source. And, and when, uh, when the Red Hat acquisition happened, it was kind of like, nope, everything's open source. And we had a lot of customers and users that were clamoring for, I want a Galaxy on-prem. Um, so we went ahead and open sourced Galaxy in 2016. And then uh, in 2019, uh, collection support got added to Galaxy. Um, and the big difference there was that it only supported artifact upload. And that, that was just kind of for, for various reasons um, around feedback. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then uh, also uh, the back end was integrated with Pulp, uh, which is a um, kind of artifact storage and distribution mechanism uh, that's, that's also um, heavily contributed to by Red Hat. Um, in 2020, the Galaxy project kind of went and started a whole new thing. Um, that was based on collections only. Uh, that was it was you know as a product initiative to better support some certain things. Um, and so the the outcome of that is uh, what's called Automation Hub on the Red Hat side. Um, and one of the big the other things that that supported is like an on-prem uh, version of that thing that could synchronize between uh, the public Automation Hub and the on-prem Automation Hub, which is not something that the Galaxy stuff ever really the original Galaxy code base ever had. Um, and then something that's just been kind of TBD and hanging out there is like, okay, well, at some point we want to move the community galaxy stuff to the galaxy NG code base. Um, but obviously, you know, that, that the fact that it's collections only kind of causes a problem. So we've kind of been just sitting on that for a while. So let's talk about, uh, what's going on here with, uh, just kind of the Ansible ecosystem in a whole, as a whole, since collections have come out. So, uh, when collections came out in 2.8 initially, uh, they didn't change very much about roles. Like uh, roles in particular, you know, it was just kind of a lift and shift. Like we wanted to be able to package roles in collections and, and invoke them, but we didn't make a lot of changes to the way roles work under the covers um, for, for better or worse. Uh, we, you know, it was just kind of like, well, people already know how to write roles. We want to make it easy for them to move those things. Um, the main things that changed with that were around plugin locality. So used to be that you could embed plugins inside of roles and that caused no end of trouble with duplication and ordering and you know if two roles have the same named thing you might end up running the module from the other one because it kind of stuck the way the plugins loaded and it was just it was kind of ugly um, it was kind of a hack from the beginning and so in, in a lot of ways and so um, collections tried to address that by making plugins a first class thing uh, that uh, 
uh, are you know theoretically easier to reason about like which one you're actually going to execute um and then we changed also a little bit about the default name resolution so that um you know roles inside of a collection uh, will look will by default look for plugins inside of the collection first uh, before it goes out and looks in other things like if you're just using the short name for a, for a plugin uh, we would try to resolve that from inside the collection first um, so really but other than that like the the mechanics of how roles execute and all the stuff under the covers it's all exactly the same code base we didn't duplicate anything there it was just kind of like okay we're just calling what was already there um, so back to the the galaxy ng uh, rewrite uh, it was a pretty big rewrite that uh, was mainly around a lot of customer feedback some of those things that we've already talked about so uh, people were really clamoring for like hey i want one of these on premise but i don't i want to be able to hook it up to the upstream one to kind of sync a bunch of things and we've got air gapped machines and we need to be able to like get stuff to those and so there were a lot of things that just didn't work. Uh, you know, it wasn't something that we could just bolt on to the existing Galaxy code base. It really needed kind of a ground up rewrite and a, and, and a rethink. Um, and the big the big thing there was uh, building it on top of Pulp instead of kind of trying to roll our own content aggregation and, and CDN and all those, and just all the things that go around that, like Pulp gives us a lot of those features for free, so. Um, Let's see. Uh, and again, yeah, we've got that kind of mix of content. Um, one of the other things that, that Galaxy NG is uh, kind of working towards is the idea of content provenance. So uh, just being able to look at um, to look at a collection and say, OK, th this is the collection that Red Hat shipped or this is the collection that as it came from the original author inside our company uh, versus someone else has, you know, someone has mucked around with this and changed it in some particular way. Um, so as I mentioned, like the community galaxy migration effort, uh, for this has just kind of been a wait and see approach, uh, with, with the dawning of collections and all the other things. There were a lot of questions, um, around this, like, obviously since, since galaxy NG was kind of a new code base, there was, uh, it, we now have two parallel code bases, right? Community galaxy is running on, on a completely different set or a largely different set of code than what automation hub has been, uh, iterating on for the past year or so. Um, Automation Hub doesn't understand roles. Like the the kind of the direction that that was built on was that, you know, uh, collections are the future. And so Automation Hub just just never even really grew the, the, the ability to do roles. There's apparently some vestigial stuff that, that I wasn't aware of until just recently, but it basically it doesn't understand roles. Um, and I think you know the internal thought was like, well, let's just wait and see what happens because maybe everybody will just move to collections and and we won't need to think about this. And well, you know, here we are, here we are, a couple of years later, and that that hasn't really happened. So the collections have collections have taken off. We've done. There's been a lot of great stuff that's been happening with collections. We've got partners. We've got community folks. Collections are doing really good things, and they've met a lot of the goals that that we had hoped they would. But there's still a lot of folks out there using standalone roles and um you know from the core side of things we've always been fairly clear that like standalone roles aren't going anywhere but on the galaxy side i think we've we've kind of waffled a lot just about what we're gonna do it's like well are are we gonna teach automation hub how to deal with standalone roles or not there's not a lot of appetite for that but you know ultimately like it's been it's just been kind of a lot of you know internal and and external like waffle and wait and see and you know that that delay has been interpreted by the community by a lot of folks in the community as a lack of commitment on our part and so i <laughs> i want to say sorry about that um we we want to be a little clearer and about what we're what we're going to do here and so let me just uh let me just say what is happening with roles so we've we've been talking about this internally and um we just want to be very clear that standalone role, you know, we've been, I think, I feel like we've been fairly clear over the past couple of years that standalone role execution isn't going anywhere. But what we haven't been clear about is like, what we haven't been as clear about is like what happens to the stuff that's, you know, there's this corpus of roles that are already out there on Galaxy and what what's going to happen with that. So let me just say that we're, we're willing to commit to standalone role install execution and publish being supported indefinitely. That doesn't mean forever, but it means for, you know, a, a 
a very long period of time that it, that is indeterminate. So, and that's for both the core engine and on the Galaxy side. Um, we uh, we also, as Civil mentioned earlier, uh, th there will be some better tooling and documentation on the way for folks that want to migrate things to collections. Um, we want to make that easier. Um, the the tooling that we'll deal with. There's a lot of little edge cases depending on what people are doing in their roles. Um, so the tooling will not be perfect for that, but the vast majority of roles um, are just tasks and, var and variables and things like that that just lift and shift into collections like with pretty much no change. So the tooling is going to kind of aim for that 80-20 rule like, um, and, and the documentation will also hopefully help um, kind of call out some of those things of like, okay, well, this is, a, this is something, if, if your role does this, you, you need to do some, you need to decide how you're going to change it to not do that if you want to move it to a collection. Um, and again, we'll make the statement that collections are the future. And what that means is that um, that that's where we're investing our time. Um, we, we want to we want to continue moving things forward to collections. We want to continue um, moving other parts of Ansible, making them uh, collection friendly so that uh, to, to give uh, content authors more flexibility to, to do things. Uh, so that's where the investments are going to be. It's not saying we're going to rip things away. We're just saying this is where the investment in the future is going to be. Um, in one form or another, Galaxy next, the Galaxy NG code base will grow limited support for standalone roles. So, um, and whatever whatever migration to the Galaxy NG code base um, needs to occur, it will wait for that to happen. So basically, the the Galaxy that you know and love will will exist in its current form until until Galaxy NG has grown enough of the capability to take over um, whatever whatever we decide is kind of the, um, the the minimum feature set that it needs to do that. Um, the the real focus here is to keep existing automation working. So um, what we've I don't want to I don't want to talk too much about the specifics of what we're deal, what we're considering here, but um, uh, Andrew, Andrew can talk a little bit about some of that, but I think the the main point is we want to keep we want to keep everything that's that's out there working, and we want to allow people to continue to bug fix those things. Um, so that means that the Galaxy CLI client, you know, if you're using if you're doing scripting or you're using something like Tower or whatever with the Galaxy CLI client to fetch roles before you run your ex, your your automation that process should continue unchanged. So we're not gonna make you go like say, switch all your stuff over to some, um, you know, to some other dead Galaxy server or some kind of archive Galaxy server. We're, we're not, that's not what we're talking about. Um, we will have some way of keeping this stuff working um, so that the consumption and automation that you have today that's scripting any of this stuff, it should just work. And also that it shouldn't require any action we're, we're pretty sure we can do this without requiring any action from role authors. So I'm sure Jeff Geerling will probably be happy to hear this just um, because uh, he's got a lot of roles out there and it, it'd be nice if whatever migration occurs is kind of transparent to everyone. So the process for publishing roles um, in this new code base may change, but for the, thing, for the things that are already out there, um, we, we think we can make this work so that it, it just kind of works transparently and that it works, you know, with everything as it exists and doesn't require any action at all by anyone outside of our team to, to make that happen. Um, with that, some of the features that you, that you know and love from Galaxy or maybe know and hate from Galaxy, I don't know. Um, we'll talk about that later. But some, some Galaxy standalone role features may go away. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Andrew Cosby from the uh, Galaxy and Hub team. He's going to talk about a couple of things, uh, talk, talk about just kind of some usage data that, that has been pulled from Galaxy, as well as um, run some polls here uh, just to see kind of what the folks that are in the room here anyway think, um, think about certain features of Galaxy. So Andrew, are you around? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um... Yeah, so my name is Andrew. I am a developer on the Galaxy team, um, AW Crosby on GitHub and IRC. Um, so yeah, to 
I won't have a lot of uh, a lot of details to give an update on, but I'm um, you know wanted reiterating kind of what Nitz was saying. Our key principles here are you know we need a single code base in order to be responsive to the community. Um, we need to have a standalone role support added into our single code base of Galaxy NG, um, and then with collections being the future, we're trying to figure out which um, which of the standalone role features are the most important that we want to be bringing over. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, we'll just I just pulled a little bit of the, the usage data for standalone roles. Um, this, this is up to date here. We've got 28,000 roles out there. Um, you know, as you would expect, you've got quite a chunk of roles that um, don't have very many downloads. Um, but you know, the 20% of the roles out there have quite a few, 150 downloads or greater, um, and 30 or so roles with more than a million. Um, a lot of those from Geolink Guy, with the top top being the, the, the Docker role there. Um, so this kind of shows that yes, standalone roles definitely being used, definitely something we need to you know keep focus on as we go forward. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, um, so I went ahead and just pulled just for for those top twenty percent, one hundred fifty downloads plus, just the list of. Um, uh, Authors with the highest number of roles just within that category. Uh, again, just kind of showing that we've we've got uh, a decent amount of authors out there that have uh, quite a few quite a few roles that are that are being used by the community. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, so this is kind of where I want to get a little bit of um, kind of run some feature polls, um, get people to. Uh, Give a little bit of thought on some of these uh, items out there, um, and I don't know if, if if multiple polls can be done at the same time, but if they can, maybe the first three I will describe kind of the first three here, um, and then can kind of get uh, people to kind of react on there. Um, I can start the first three polls if that's perfect. Really cool. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Carol. Um, so really, um, the first one is. Just being able to have the role docs, the README, the metadata viewable within the user interface on galaxy.ansible.com. Um, this is something I would imagine would be very important to people, but we're just kind of getting the first couple ones up here just to get a gauge a little bit. Um, number two, collections within Galaxy. I guess more of a really uh, overall temperature check of just you know the importance of those. Um, same with number three, standalone roles in Galaxy. As stated before, we know they're important, but just uh, worth worth uh, kind of getting that information there. Um, so I guess we'll give that a few seconds to kind of uh, come in here. Do you see the polls? I see them within my... View. So we've got out there kind of just a three categories of don't care um, or nice to have or can't live without it. I don't, I'm not sure I follow the question or the poll regarding collections in Galaxy. Are they not already in Galaxy or? Uh, yes, yes. Community Galaxy has uh, has collection support already. Um, and I think we just kind of wanted to get um, more of a, I think this is mainly more of just a, a little bit of the, the usage of, uh, of the folks that are out there using it, depending on it. Um, because as things kind of go to the future of collections, I don't know, it might be a helpful data point to, to, to just have on about how many, of, how many folks out there are starting to rely on them. All right, um, Carol. I don't know how this works. On how if um, do you kind of close it and then we see the see the results, or if there's even enough time? Or... I can leave them open. That I don't think I've not encountered a limit of number of polls. Um, it's just that people will have to scroll down to you know to get uh, to the rest of the polls. I see. Yeah, but okay. I think we should leave them open so that people have time to think about it and react. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so I think the other items here, and I described them or have a little bit more meat to them. Um, 
So number four, uh, the community rating of content. So these are the community surveys that we introduced um, out there. And I know in some cases they've been used, but in other cases it hasn't had a lot of traction. Um, there might not be a lot of individual users out there who are both doing discovery of roles as well as actually um, then filling out a survey on those. So really wanted to get feelings on the usefulness of this because this is, uh, I would say definitely a candidate of something that we might not port over um, into the Galaxy NG code base. Um, currently within Galaxy NG, for those that haven't um, used it yourselves, um, but we do not have this type of uh, community rating out there. Um, number five, um, very similar. Um, Within Community Galaxy today, we have a content score, um, and that's mainly looking uh, using Ansible Lint and taking some of the violations that might come out of there and trying to associate um, a score based off of that. Um, so we want to get people's thoughts about automated quality rating in general, uh, how important this might be um, for something that would be there for uh, standalone roles. Um, number six, uh, user interface initiated import and management uh, standalone roles versus the command line. Um, so, you know, as, as we look at the key features to bring over into uh, Galaxy NG code base, um, you know, all the things that Nitz mentioned with the CLI and being able to publish and download and things like that, um, those are all very, very important. When we look at what we put into the UI, given that we want to focus more on collections. Um, this is something like, do we really want to uh, have a user interface focus that, is, that, that allows people to come, kind of come in and manage to, uh, after they've logged in the different things that they've imported and re-imported from there uh, or deprecated from there uh, versus handling things in the CLI? Um, Number seven, um, I would say GitHub interaction in general, uh, both as a single sign-on, being able to log into Galaxy using your GitHub account, um, and also being able to be using the namespaces that come from GitHub and having basically that manage um, coming through GitHub. So that ends up has come through and have, uh, it's created some confusion as, as, uh, as Orgs can change names and things like that, eventually kind of creating a method that we've had to have a manual process to request a namespace and have it tie different users to the organization associated in GitHub. We would like to make that a simpler process um, so that is easier to, to manage and it is more automated um, and possibly decouple the namespaces from GitHub itself. Um, but that's something that is kind of just one of the things that we're initially thinking about. Um, there's a lot here that has not been decided. This is kind of just really, we're trying to use this opportunity to get feedback. Um, um, eight uh, notifications in UI and uh, an email. Um, nine, we have a Travis web, webhook as a way to initiate standalone role import when things have been, um, when code has been updated in GitHub. Um, it's, uh, I've, I've seen a community suggestion out there before about how possibly just using a GitHub action and that would take some of the load off the server and set some of the code and the logic away from the server. So that would be something that would make it easier as we look to porting things over into Galaxy NG. Um, and lastly, number 10, uh, collection import by providing a Git ref versus an artifact. Um, we've, we've definitely, uh, seen some possible value in this, um, but we this is something that we thought would be worth asking here in this venue. Any, any questions about any of these items uh, while we're kind of waiting for people to vote? I, I think I saw a couple of things in chat. 
I can't show the slides and have that up at the same time. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, just kind of looking from bottom up here. Do we really want in the GitHub as an auth backend? For some, this may be a problem. Um, I think that well, one of the one of the thoughts that I that I had, and, and I haven't really uh, this isn't fully baked and talked through, but um, you know, if we are importing from GitHub, we we might need to have some sort of auth, um, API key that somehow says that yes, you are the owner of this particular GitHub uh, organization and repository in order to actually associate it within Community Galaxy. Uh, maybe we don't care about that, but um, like I, I wouldn't want to like just like adding Jitterling guy's role into my namespace and that, that would seem like weird. Um, but um, that might be something where we might be somewhat tied to it. But as far as auth in general, um, that's that's open. And I think that um, having the namespaces to be not coupled to GitHub would, would be something that does need to be thought about. Uh, and the question about, yeah, a lot, uh, some of these, I think from basically number four, between f number four and number nine are items that are currently in community galaxy that we're debating on whether we bring over into galaxy NG. Answer Andreas's question. All right, so um, not sure how much time we have left. I don't know if it's valuable now to try to um, Show the results of the poll. I don't know how you've been doing it in other polls, Carol, or or, uh, or Nitz, if I you have think any you should be able to see the results. And uh, the we have a lot of votes for the first three questions, but um, please also scroll down and respond to questions uh, features four to ten because I think uh, right now. I guess I have to vote myself in order to see the results. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, did you have anything else you wanted to you wanted to add there, Andrew, or are you uh, you good on those? That's everything that I had to talk about, unless there's any questions. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just go and wrap up then. Sorry about the hammering in the background. Uh, like I'm getting some windows replaced, and <laughs> of course the timing is just perfect that they're beating on things. Thankfully, they they didn't start in my office like they were going to today. So. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, just kind of give a, a quick recap here of, of the things that we've talked about. Uh, just want to you know make sure that everyone really understands standalone roles are not going anywhere. Um, if if you if you like them and they're working for you, keep using them, keep publishing new ones, or keep publishing updates to the ones that you've got. If you like, like that's that that stuff's not going anywhere. Um, again, collections are the future from an investment perspective. So that's where you're going to see uh, that's where you're going to see kind of um, you know, new features lighting up and and uh, time and and effort being spent for the most part. Um, and you know, I guess just big picture talk with us. Like I'm actually, uh, I'm a, I'm a little inspired by the docs team and and their survey. And I'm like, yeah, hey, maybe we should do something like that with this as well to get just a broader community survey about like what do people really care about. You know, we we hear we hear from people sometimes, um, but it, it's it's hard to tell. You know, it, it's hard to guide our our decisions by um, you know the the voices we hear the most. So maybe you know if we can figure out a way to to try and engage people um, to get a broader consensus on on the direction we think we should go, um, I think that would be useful. Um, so again, you know the ways that you can talk with us. The, these are always the same, right? The the, the IRC meetings that are that are happening every week, um, contrib summits like this one, GitHub issues. Um, uh, d discussions on things like that, just all the usual venues. And uh, with that, just um, keep calm and automate on. Like um, we're, we're we're moving forward. Um, any questions for me before we wrap up this one? Or Andrew? <laughs> I, I really appreciate the update. What I guess I'm interested in is, are people feeling a little bit calmer than? Maybe they were half an hour ago. I think this is a big change, right? And I'll hold my hand up and like, we should have done a better job communicating. One thing we're really trying to do is go, we think X is a problem. We don't have the answers on how to do that, but we are aware. There's often a, 
a pressure to wait for to to not um, to have a full blown polished solution before you go. And this is the solution. That obviously takes some times time to do that. That goes against the sort of open source to um, where we're trying to do things. Daniel says awesome. That's good. Anyone else feeling better about it? Jeff, can I pick on you? Because I know you're vocal and you bang <laughs> my vote. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad that there's actually an announcement about it because I think the, the thing that bugged me was nobody ever said like these will be supported for X amount of time, even if it was one year, five years, two years or indefinite. I, a lot of people in the community seem to be like, well, roles are these old things. Nobody's going to use them. They're going to break. And they, they have some things have started breaking here and there, like tooling that surrounds them. Uh, and so this is much better than people speculating that, yeah, they're the old way, they're going away. You know, now it's like they will stay supported. Collections are the future, but roles are not the past yet. So. Yeah. And, and yeah, definitely. I, that's just, it's a, it's, it's kind of a growing pain thing and a communication thing for sure. Just, and, and again, I, we just weren't sure. On, especially on the the galaxy uh, the galaxy side mm -hmm. of things, like what what would make sense? Because yeah, with um, you know we just didn't know. You know, it's like if if collections just if if collections just took off like a rocket and and everybody moved away, well maybe there was maybe there's no point. But that's not happened. So okay, great. We need to we need to fit. We know we need to spend some resources here to figure it out. So now it's just a matter of what's the best what's the best way to spend those resources to to keep things going. But just uh, yeah, hopefully the, the commitment that we will keep things going uh, will assuage a lot of fears out there. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, um, I will uh, hand it off to whoever's next. Thank you so much, Matt and Andrew. Um, next, we have uh, documenting Ansible collections. And I think, was it Sandra, you uh, are able to facilitate this. It's, it's not a, a presentation, but more of to discuss about uh, how we go about documenting and book collections. Sure. Um, so just to kind of give a, a brief overview, what we have today is we have a few scenario guides over on docs.ansible.com, and they live in the Ansible Ansible repo. Um, some of them are, at this point, more associated with a collection than they are with um, you know, an Ansible core release. So there's there's this problem where they're they're tied to a release that they're not dependent on anymore. Um, and then there's the problem of all these other collections that don't have um, any documentation other than you know the role the the um, modules and plugins. So what we're kind of looking for, um, I'm not sure who put the 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 thing on the agenda, but basically we're kind of looking for let's have a discussion. What is it that those of you who are collection owners are looking for and those who use collections, what are you looking for at the sort of individual collection level that isn't there right now? I'll, I'll add one more element to that before we open it up. And that is this relates to the galaxy discussion we just had. So as the Ansible ecosystem continues to evolve, um, the more we can understand about how people want to consume documentation, um, the easier it will be for us. Do people want to see documentation in Galaxy? Um, would they prefer to see it on docs.ansible.com? Um, this uh, has implications for what formatting we use. So think also about if you own a role or roles or collection or collections, um, how do you want to write the documentation that you are going to present to your users? Um, since I know we're in a developer heavy group today, um, all of those things connect. Right now, the, the, the core Ansible docs are written in restructured text. Um, it's not hard to learn, uh, but if you're used to just plain old markdown, it's a little different. Um, so depending on which way 
which direction people want to go, we're kind of at a crossroads right now of how do people want to write documentation in this new galaxy world? <laughs> no, we are not doing tech, Brian. No, 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 tech. Um, sorry, I'm watching the little chat things pop up. Um, we on the docs team have opinions. I have an opinion. I have a pretty strong opinion. Um, but mine is definitely not the only one that counts. Um, and as Matt Davis was talking about, you know, part of this is about where, where traffic goes, where interest goes. Um, while collections took off, roles continue to be an important part of the ecosystem and for documentation, you know, there's that galaxy versus docs.ansible.com is in a similar place right now. All right, I'll stop yammering now. So one of the things that's kind of been on my mind when we think about this is if we have, I mean, just imagine the, the scenario guides we have, if we push them all into collections, um, they would potentially only be visible in Automation Hub or Galaxy NG, for example. So a search on docs.ansmore.com won't find it for you unless we do some other magic. Um, so I guess for me, that's kind of the first question for those who, who create collections and those who use collections. What do you think if the docs are only available at the collection level in one place or the other? Do you have thoughts about that? I see in I see in chat at least uh, Gerling guy and Daniel are oh, well assuming Daniel's reply, replying to Jeff that docs only on Galaxy are okay. Um, Andreas, it's not searchable on Galaxy as far as I know. I can try. I should say I should try it on Automation Hub because that would be the future. Um, There's also some problems with with well not problems limitations of Galaxy, like um, docs fragments can be in different collections, for instance. Uh, but in that case, you're not going to get the docs, the complete docs. Those docs fragments will not load. You probably won't be able to render the docs at all on Galaxy. Uh, and then like, if you're linking and you try and link from one collections docs to another collections docs, from the scenario guide, let's say you have a scenario guide in some top level collection and then you have various modules that all relate to that, like uh, networking, and then you have different hardware vendors and they all, you know, you try and link between them. Galaxy doesn't have a way to do that at the moment. And I believe it will be pretty hard for them to implement it. Andrew could probably say more about whether that's something that they think they could do or not. You know, right now we we build the documentation during the import process, and and we don't uh, have a way of resolving the dependencies in that particular piece that we do that in. Um, if that's something that we end up getting priority on, that's something we 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 kind of look to do. We've also talked about before about possibly having, um, you know, what if the build itself built the documentations of the build command. Um, something that hasn't really been discussed, but it's just one of many options out there that could be looked at if we go down that route of this needing to be important. We well, have a nice thing about, um, you know, the, the the way the doc site build, you know, if we, if we stuck to the, uh, okay, if something is in a particular Ansible package, uh, then it will be on the doc site. The nice thing about that is that you have a version, you have a fixed versions, you know, fixed set of versions for all of those things. Where on Galaxy, you don't have that same that same thing. So, in particular, we're talking about doc fragments, right? Like, which version of the collection do you pull the doc fragment from when you're Galaxy? Like, that's a hard. I mean, that's it's a decision that someone has to make somewhere. Whether it's latest, whether it's something, you know, whether it's pinned, whether it's build depths. There's some problem that needs to be solved there that's already solved by the Ansible distribution because of the way that it all, just the way that it inherently works. We have a specific version of those doc fragments to render. So much easier problem to solve than, than the Galaxy side. Galaxy already does that for uh, plugin uh, docs, which it already displays. So in that case, Matt, what, what do you do when you're looking at a collection 
that has been published but has not made it into a distro yeah i don't know that i was just pointing out that that you know that problem is much easier solved on the doc site yeah uh, because just because okay. of the inherent nature of how that works uh with the with the uh community distribution of ansible versus uh versus galaxy like it's not it's not insurmountable by any means on galaxy it just yeah there's data we're missing to do that today. Yeah, okay. uh, we have a first-hand experience with this. When we developed Sensogo collection, for example, there were no tools to generate documentation. So we actually hacked a tool around the Ansible doc that uh, extracted the documentation, rendered the uh, restructured text files, and then we actually used Sphinx to generate the documentation site, and that doc documentation site is still alive today because we don't have any other means of publishing our scenario guides and other non-reference materials that we also provide to our uh, users. So there is, it is problematic to generate the documentation for the reference things, but there is also that other part of the, the, the documentation that we still don't know how to even supply to the end user so as i said scenario guides or installation guides and so on and so forth but as i said we when we uh, when we encountered this situation about a year ago we just had to beat the bullet and we created a sphinx site for our collection but on the good side the documentation site link in the galaxy works for sensible so yay what i'm seeing um kind of seeing in chat and hearing is that there's a lot of people who, who want this visible in Galaxy at some point with the understanding that Galaxy code base is currently not as supported as the Automation Hub Galaxy NG, so it may be something that has to wait. Um, so I guess the other, the other question I have for folks is, you know, what do we, what do we advise people today? You know, what, what should we be telling them other than, sorry, we don't have a solution. You know, do we do something like say, you know, here's an example with the Sensu and, and try what they tried or, you know, how do we help the contributors now? Yeah, I, I think it'd be great, for example. Oh, we've lost you, Sandra. I, I could see you lips moving, but you're, you're muted. Me? Maybe maybe my video is slower than the audio. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely out of sync, yeah. Sorry, did I cut you off? Go ahead, Gondolo, I think. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> I'm very confused. It's from, for me, at least, in the UK, there's a good three or four seconds delay there. And I apologize if she, I cut you off. I, I think one thing I'd, I'd like to see, and this is expanding on your last point, is I, if we say it's going to take us a while, maybe till Galaxy moves to Galaxy NG, however, we will support RST and you can use, I don't know, InterSphinx, to, which is a method of linking from one doc site to another. So that's how you can link from one collection to another or from, I don't know, to scenarios in another place. First, to define that standard, get some CI in place, and then we can tell people you can write this stuff. We can link to it in GitHub and it will look a bit ugly because some of the links won't work, but at least the main docs are there. It gets people over the main hump of writing documentation. And then, I don't know, 12, 18 months down the line, we actually then start rendering that. Maybe that's a possible way forward. One of the, one of the problems that I hit whenever I'm thinking about this is for docs.answerable.com, if we wanted to bring it back and consume it there, it has to be RST. If we wanted visible in Galaxy NG um, slash Automation Hub, it has to be Markdown. Um, and as someone mentioned, the Markdown is is not as robust uh, as people might want just yet. And I don't know what the roadmap is for that, but I think what we what we see here is you know there's there's two different um, authoring types: RST versus versus Markdown, but there's also the complexity of the docs. You know, all this interlinking, um, if you want index pages and deeply nested guides, I don't know how well Galaxy NG 
today handles it and how deep they want to go into it. So I think that's a that's kind of a separate decision that has to be made somewhere that we are either going to go all in for these guides in some future version of Galaxy um, or we're not. And I think that's what a lot of this, it, in my mind, a lot of this has to wait on that decision because we don't know what to tell people, you know, write it this way, write it that way, keep it simple, do it as complex as you want. We can't give that guidance until we know what's on the roadmap and what the time frame is. Well, and there's one thing in particular, there's one, uh, there's a bunch of little features. You you, you mentioned a big, a, a, like a list of, of little features. There's one huge one that, that I'm not sure how we would handle. And that is like uh, the nested tables in module docs, like RST, neither RST nor Markdown support that properly, but RST at least lets you do embedded HTML stuff. I'm talking, I'm talking nested tables. So we have like module docs for dictionary types. You have, so you, you can have multiple, multiply nested tables. And we're, we do that with module docs today on the doc site by rendering those as HTML tables. There's a, there's a, pro, there's a code process that goes and extracts the stuff and generates the HTML directly. If we had to do this in Markdown, I don't, I actually don't know how that renders on automation hub today. I haven't looked. So, um, but that, that's a, that's a big problem to solve. Um, okay. if, if we do anything other than RST. Yeah. And I might be able to turn that into RST rather than HTML. I've played around with that many times and it seems like, oh, if I took two months, I could probably do this. <laughs> but you know, who has two months to spend on something like that? Uh, but I don't see any way at all to do it into Markdown. It's huge. Yeah, and and would that two months be better spent actually added and adding nested table support to to RST in some fashion? That that would probably be a, a much bigger well, effort than anyone wants to bite off. But yeah, RST does do some nested table support, and I believe that I can. There's enough there that I could make it happen. The problem is, um, it's not just nested tables. There's also like CSS classes and IDs, and you know we're taking advantage of the fact that we're embedding raw HTML to use HTMLisms, and I have to figure out how to support that in RST as well. And it's pretty much fat chance in Markdown. I think it's just not going to happen in Markdown. I don't think, right? Yeah, on Automation Hub does some translation and and. Um... From the importer uh, to handle this 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 tables, uh, I don't know if it would be useful. Um, anything that you guys are talking about, but that's how we handle that. Yeah, it would be interesting to see that. Like, actually, if you can if you can pull up one of those one of, like one of the network modules or something that has a deeply nested arg spec, it'd be interesting if you could screenshot that because like I I don't, I don't even have access to Automation Hub, so I can't I can't tell you like how that what that looks like. Yeah, sure. We are running a little bit behind, about five minutes or so. Um, please continue the discussions uh, while we take a short break, because uh, we are now into our final stretch, and we still have three topics um, left of the Contributor Summit. So I will start the timer, but feel free to uh, continue discussions. And thanks to Sandra and Alicia for leading the discussion on this. I, th I think Jeff's point on um, uh, last point now is like when you go to Ruby, if you're searching for Ruby gem documentation, you don't want to search the main Ruby documentation. So I guess, you know, I don't know, I believe gems are like that modules and modules, I don't know much about Ruby. And I think that's a really good point. If, if the collection is the first class entity, right? We said collections are the future, then that is the place um, that you want to go, that your main point of entry will be Galaxy or Galaxy NG or Automation Hub. So maybe the, you know, it's about getting some good searching around there. And this is longer term stuff, right? We're maybe talking about a couple of years. So maybe a year or two from now, the package docs would be just a page that says these are the included collections and these are the in included versions of those collections with links to Galaxy once it's on NG and all the docs are displayed there. Is that kind of the future we're 
I, I, that, I'm, I'm just throwing ideas out. I guess it, it mm -hmm. depends what, what the. It's a bit of a strategic comment as well, right? If, if we, you know, I'm, I'm just extrapolating from collections of the future on the go-to thing. Does that sort of longer term negate the need for docsansible.com? Because obviously at the moment that only has a, a subset that only has what we publish, so what we include in the Ansible package, which is what, 70 or so, the gate in our collections. So there's a lot of other collections that don't get the module docs rendered there, or at all, in fact, at the moment, they're only on automation hub. If, if, for example, we said it's RST or nothing, would that be okay with people? I'd be interested in, in feedback there. I think I think what we would say is if you want it to be on docs.ansible.com, it needs to be RST. I mean, I, we're, we're certainly, I, I cannot imagine a scenario in which we say you can't do markdown, you can't do this, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, so that's a good point, yeah. So you can do markdown and, you know, link to it in GitHub. GitHub does a decent job at rendering markdown. Yeah, but, but you know, I think, I think it's fair to say if you, if you want your docs to appear on platform X, whether that's Galaxy NG or docs.ansible.com to say, this is how you do it. And these are, you know, we don't support every format under the sun. This, this, these are the rules for this publication channel. And, um, you know, maybe we have a couple of different options for publication channels. Um, my, my sense is that very few, uh, role authors or owners are gonna write RST documentation in the roles. Um, but there may be collection owners who feel it's worthwhile to have that index page for their collection include more than just the plugin documentation. Um, well, what maybe I'm not hearing things right. When I kind of try to summarize what I'm hearing is that people want all the collection docs inside some version of Galaxy, be that something in the future. So that, that is where they're searching and that is where they're finding you know, how to use this collection, how to use this roles, how to use the modules, and plugins within this roles, and it's all there within Galaxy. Well, I, as a Python developer, when I search for a package and I find it on PyPy, for example, there is only, almost always a documentation linking to the read the docs or something. So the, at least I would expect that any collection on the Galaxy would have a operating documentation site, whether this is directly hosted on Galaxy or is or if we have a tools or developers to generate their own documentation sites, doesn't matter much to me, but I would expect that there is some support for developers to get their documentation published. So to incentivize writing the, the documentation in the first place, I would say. So that is kind of a third option of, you know, giving folks guidance on how to roll their own doc site somewhere per collection. But that wouldn't solve the searchability problem because then they would really be scattered and Google would be your only hope. So I think the gist of it for me is there's, there's a lot of options. Um, we need to decide what we want and who can make it happen. And it's not just the community side. It has to match whatever the roadmap is for um, Galaxy NG and, and Automation Hub. And that's kind of where things are, things are a bit stuck. Yeah, I think that's a good summary. And I, it sounds like from the discussions today and the stuff we've heard over the you know, past few years, that discoverability and ability and sorry, index and discoverability, i.e., Google are sort of the key two main requirements of whatever we do. Because we could do something where we. I don't know, set up a read the docs interface for everyone and 
put some tooling in there so you just register you said the name space and it does some magic but then you you probably lose the discoverability and the ability to google for stuff which probably fails at the first, first hurdle so in about two minutes we're going to swap to an update from jill on the cloud side um but there's been a lot of good discussion here um so any closing thoughts uh, well, I see in chat still uh, people are ar arguing about format, and uh, well, I'm a little biased as a Python developer, but uh, like when you know, choosing the proper format for docs, uh, we probably consider uh, other popular platforms like Ruby mentioned or Rust docs or Go docs. Which format do they use? Uh, but uh, there is one uh, issue with that. We will have to build tooling around that. And uh, it seems like in Python uh, ecosystem, we have a pretty much consistent uh, approach for docs, like for Sphinx, and there is the format for writing docs, uh, read the docs, um, or uh, as a, as a um, as a resource or for hosting docs or as an approach for just rendering and consistent uh, and consistently storing those docs and uh, provide users a consistent experience to accessing those docs because pretty much every Python package right now, uh, except some large packages, uh, stores their docs on Ritz docs. And almost every every time you go on PyPy, you go to Ritz docs. And it provides search capabilities, uh, but on the other hand, docs can be generated uh, to in question and stored, let's say, in GitHub pages if every uh, collection ultra maintains their own docs. That's random thoughts. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, there's definitely <laughs> lots of different ideas and opinions about that. Um, but let's go on to the next session. We actually uh, talked over the break, which is great. Uh, next up, we have Joe with the uh, cloud update. Joe, are you ready? You're on mute, by the way. Oh, hey, that helps if I click that button too. All right, can you all see the presentation I've got up there now? Yes. Sweet. All right. So, hey, everyone. Um, I'm Jill. Uh, I'm part of the cloud engineering team. We have a hopefully brief update here with uh, nothing too contentious. Give everyone a break. Uh, oops. Next. There we go. Um, so, for a quick refresher, these are the collections that the cloud team is maintaining. Um, this list hasn't changed since the last contributor summit, though the team has. Um, the cloud team has grown in the last few months, so if you see any of them around GitHub or IRC, please say hi to Mike, Alina, and Alvin, who have joined the team. We're very excited about that. Uh, we've doubled in size. It's kind of awesome. So in the AWS collection, um, we just had our, uh, both of the AWS collections, we had 1.4 releases in February, and then we dropped a 1.4.1 for Amazon AWS just last week. Um, I know a lot of folks were having problems with the IP address uh, removal. So if you've run into that, please update to 141. Um, we've started planning for the 2.0 release. And in that, we will be promoting several modules from the community collection to the Red Hat supported Amazon.AWS collection. Um, that's going to involve removing those modules from the community collection and that GitHub repo with redirects. Um, and moving them over into the Amazon AWS collection. Uh, also, a big change coming up, Amazon is dropping support for Python 2.7 in the Boto 3 library. Um, so we will also be dropping support for Python 2 at that time. Uh, that should happen in the 2.0 release for the community collection. For Amazon AWS, it will either be 2.0 or possibly 3.0. Um, I'm still talking to our product management folks. We will announce those in the bullhorn once we have more specific dates for those. Uh, we are also right now in the process of transitioning to Zool for CI for both AWS collections. Uh, that should be completed no later than the end of April, but will probably be sooner than that. 
On the Kubernetes and OpenShift side, um, we had version 1.2 released in the last month, and we have now started work on 2.0. 2.0 will contain the uh, much talked about uh, completion of the migration from the community.kubernetes namespace to kubernetes.core, um, as well as complete the migration of OpenShift inventory and Kate's auth to the OKD collections. Um, 2.0 will have a number of performance improvements and a lot of other refactoring. Um, so hopefully that will help folks out that are using those collections. Um, we're really, really interested in getting feedback from people that might be using these collections. Um, if you're using them, please connect with us either on IRC or through GitHub issues. Um, in addition to how the collections are working for you now, we'd like to hear about things like, are there use cases that are not being covered? Are there use cases that are really painful to automate? Um, are there other Kubernetes ecosystems tools that you need to automate um, that we're not currently covering? Things like Prometheus, stuff like that, so that we can help build the roadmaps for the future. And then in our VMware collections, um, the next release will focus a lot on landing several new modules. Uh, those will cover working with V appliances, as well as templates and other content library features um, that are supported by VMware's REST API. And that's all I got. Um, you can find us on these channels on IRC or connect with us in our GitHub repos. Does anyone have any questions, I guess, now? Hopefully that was an easy one. I don't think I see any questions on IRC or chat. Jill, cool. is, these, the, um, is this the first time that we're promoting anything from community to a supported collection? Yes. That is amazing. What was, can you talk a little bit about the crate the both the technical yeah let, let's focus on the technical right let's we'll try and make it easier uh, on the, the, the technical criteria and maybe if there's some testing requirements or anything of how you what you had to do to get them to spark yeah so what we're focusing on right now is a particular set of use cases uh, right now with the amazon aws collection you can't really use that supported content to go from like hey i just signed up for an aws account to I actually can create a VPC and maybe spin up some EC2 instances, which is kind of the most fundamental thing you might want to do with AWS. So we're focusing on enabling that kind of rudimentary use case um, by taking a couple of modules that we know support that use case that are common things that anyone just from, you know, table stakes using AWS, we've gone through and we're looking at them for, you know, do these meet our criteria for, do they have integration tests? Are those tests supported? Are they stable? Do they actually cover the basic use cases that the module covers? Does the module support check mode? Uh, does the module handle exceptions and error messages in, you know, a reliable and sane fashion? Um, so we've had a lot of PRs going through doing those things where there might have been gaps, making sure that these modules will be free of any known bugs um, and stable for people. And we are, in, you know, starting to land those now. Once we land all of those, it will be, you know, copy and paste the modules over, you know, RM them in the old collection and uh, pray. Everything's going to go great, right? <laughs> And we will definitely set up redirects and make sure that all of those are in there so that folks who have been using them in community will still get them. Everyone who's using community AWS should have Amazon AWS already installed because all of our module utilities are in Amazon AWS. There's a hard dependency for having Amazon AWS installed if you're using community. Um, so hopefully that will help make that go really smoothly for people. Yeah, I, I think that's really exciting. I yeah. sort of didn't expect that to happen this year. So I, I think that's great work by the, the cloud team. And the community has been helping out with them. Right? It's cool. I, I will now look to the network team to peer pressure them into doing similar. Uh oh. Any other questions about the cloud team? Everyone's real quiet. Oh, 
Oh, so Brian mentioned, yeah, it, having the module utilities in a different all in one collection does mean that if your module is in community, but the actual bug lies in the module utility, it can make bug reporting a little challenging. Um, we thought that that was preferable to duplicating the module utilities in both collections and having to keep them in sync. Um, we thought that the maintenance overhead of that would be brutal versus just having to say, oh, hey, that bug is actually in the module util. Let's migrate that issue over to the other collection. But yeah, that, that can be confusing for contributors. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. How, how badly do you want to be damned? Yeah, and it's like I can go in there and just be like GitHub move issue versus trying to every time we make a change to a module utility having to, you know, copy paste that. It felt like there was a lot more opportunity for a user error if we tried to do that. And we could have put the module utils in a third shared collection, but then that's just, no, that wasn't going to happen. Everything gets a collection at that point. Uh, it wasn't covered so much. Um, the uh, James had asked, was community OKD versus Red Hat OpenShift covered? I guess what, I'm not sure if the question is there. Uh, upstream, like many Red Hat projects, uh, upstream, the name of that collection is community.okd to reflect the upstream OKD sort of naming and trademarks of the OpenShift community project. And then downstream for our Red Hat supported collection um, that, can, you know, if you get that collection from Automation Hub, its namespace and name is Red Hat .openshift, uh, kind of following the Red Hat upstream downstream uh, pattern that many Red Hat projects follow. Does that answer the question that you had, James? So to Jeff's point that it, it's difficult to write portable um, playbooks, roles, or examples, I, I don't disagree. Um, that is one of those like, the legal people said we had to do it this way. <laughs> I'm not the lawyer. Um, I try not to get into arguments with the lawyers. So yeah, I feel your pain. Uh, Set is your friend. I apologize. I don't have a uh, super good answer for that. And and specifically around that problem, like we have tried really, really hard to avoid that problem wherever possible for what I don't know why the Kubernetes one really had to go that way, but it did. So, but that argument has been made very strongly that, you know, content portability is really important. And, and, you know, when people are writing things, you know, blog posts or sample content or whatever it is, like if they have to go copy, you know, copy or, you know, search and replace the names of all the collections like that's that's an obnoxious thing so we've managed to avoid it just about everywhere else now we're, we're not renaming any more of these collections yeah <laughs> at least not for a year give, give us give us a year and then uh, maybe we'll be recovered enough to talk about renaming um yeah we we feel your pain Yeah, the community Kubernetes core issue is just unfortunately timing. Ideally, we would have sent that out as Kubernetes.core, but it went, it got created as community.kubernetes and put into the um, whatever the community package before we got to it. So then we've had to deal with that naming issue. And then the Red Hat one, that's just export law and all sorts of things that are open source lawyer team said, we have to do it this way. And that's gonna be the case for any um, Red Hat product that we create collections for. We're gonna to have to deal with this dual naming. It's, it's, we can't put Red Hat on it, but as a business, we wanna put Red Hat on it, especially for the supported stuff that, that you know, we have subscribers for. So it's just one of those you know, areas of business impinging on technology. It wasn't my first choice, trust me. <laughs> it was about my last choice. 
but that's where we made it to.